Well, it's time for another tutorial, and as you, some of you who follow us on Instagram have noticed, we have a new silicone, so that means it's time for some more videos explaining some of the nuances of some of the new formulas. So what we have recently done is expanded our line of, this is kind of our, our house brand of silicones for medical simulators and that sort of thing, is the SkinCast line of silicones. SkinCast silicones are, um, designed to simulate certain hardnesses and softnesses of organic tissue. Starting at the firm end of the scale, and firm is of course very relative where organic tissue is concerned, uh, firm would be our new 0030. And this is uh, equivalent to probably around your earlobe, maybe a little firmer than an average earlobe. And then on the really soft end, we have the double O or triple O five, and that's going to be really soft. And by itself, this is really uh, a really soft gel. It still has enough stability that uh, it can be cast and molded, unlike extremely deadened gel tin, but it really has more of the properties of a really soft gel. So you want to be careful how you use this. By itself, I wouldn't use this to make more than like uh, organs or you know internal organs or that sort of thing or I would typically use it encapsulated with one of the other skin cast silicones so again this is a fairly firm into the scale and this is typically a formula the 0030 is like some of our other double O silicones like uh, just gel double O or plat cell gel double O zero uh, 0030 this is intended for use as a, a material to cast dolls or silicone masks or adult novelties or whatever. That's, that's typically what this is for. And these other formulas are really designed as support materials for this. So if you made a skin with this, you could back it up with one of the softer gels. And I'm going to link at the end of this tutorial uh, to some previous tutorials we've done highlighting the virtues of the 0010 and the 0005. So it gets a little confusing because the 0005 is actually on the 0 scale. So that is the softest, then the 10, then the 30. And again, remember that the 00 and 0 scale are down below the regular A scale that many of you are familiar with. Now, what we're going to focus on in this tutorial is pigmenting these materials. Now, for the most part, pretty straightforward. You add pigment, you stir it in, it, they're intrinsically colored. As they come, they're going to be that colorless translucent. But these really low viscosity silicones, because of their low viscosity, that means that some of these dense pigments that have uh, titanium dioxide and whatnot in them tend to settle down in the silicone. And that can cause some issues for uh, some of you that are casting, you know, some of these dense flesh tones and things like that, um, where it's harder to get that suspended. So what we're going to do today is we're going to use some of our uh, flesh tone and some of the white pigment to, uh, and show some tricks for using those, even though those are really thick paste pigments, to pigment these low viscosity formulas. Now, what we're going to do, we're starting with our basic white and our flesh tone. And again, at the end of this, I'll link to some other tutorials that are relative to the cause here, but uh, important to note that uh, our white pigment is very dense. It's a very dense paste. And same thing with the flesh. Both of these are very dense paste pigments. So what we need to do when we're working with these, and uh, we're, we're going to use the white for this example because it is so thick. This is the, the trickier of the two to work with when you're working with low viscosity systems. With some of the thicker systems like gel tin or gel double O, uh, those really, you don't run into this kind of issue. But uh, with the low viscosity systems, it can be an issue. So I'm gonna scoop out a decent little glob of my white pigment. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of silicone fluid. Now, many of you are familiar with this, just our straight up uh, silicone fluid, but we also have the SC5002. This is a, a silicone thinner or fluid from BJB. And it's a little less expensive than our, our main silicone fluid. So we're just gonna add a little bit of the silicone fluid to it or silicone thinner, same thing. I'm hesitant to call something like this a thinner just because thinner usually implies some kind of solvent, but uh, 
it does thin the silicone out, so it does serve that purpose. So there we go. Now see that breaking down into a thinner, uh, a more usable liquid consistency? And that means that it's, it's going to take a little bit more to do the job because we are you know, thinning this down a little bit, but that because that is so concentrated, that just gives us a, a pigment that will go into suspension a lot easier than that raw paste pigment. So if you do a lot of work with low viscosity formulas, it's a good idea to go ahead and just make up a little bottle of this pigment like this. This probably used maybe five grams, if that, of uh, silicone fluid, and maybe a couple of grams of, uh, of the uh, pigment. And it's important to know that both of these materials really have a negligible effect on the chemistry of the silicone. Unless you add a lot of silicone fluid, you're not gonna change that chemistry. So when you, unless you start hitting you know, over 10%, then you start seeing some physical properties change. But uh, same thing with the silicone pigment. When you have to add a lot of silicone pigment to affect the physical properties of most of the silicone. So uh, again, 1% of uh, pigment would be a lot of pigment. So now we have a much more usable material that we could add by the drop or however we want to dispense that. So now we're going to add that to some of the very low viscosity 0010 formula. Okay, now we're ready to measure our equal parts of our A and B. And again, this is very low viscosity, so uh, be aware that pours very easily. So if you're used to some of the thicker silicones, be very careful with this. It's easy to over pour more than you need. And we're just gonna mix up a 200 gram batch for this pour, which is more than we need, but I wanna make sure that we have enough that it's visible on the camera machine. Okay, so there's our silicone. And now that's a lot easier to suspend and get our color. Now, since we're creating a realistic flesh tone, we're gonna complement that with some flocking colors. And this is really important. Remember, uh, if you're doing fair skin, Fair skin is tricky because if you start with a lot with our standard flesh tone, you have to add a lot of white to it to knock it down, and it's real easy to wind up opaquing that. So to prevent that, what we're going to do is start with white and bring it up to the color that we want, rather than try to adjust that an existing flesh tone with more pigment. Because again, Anytime you're working with a, a translucent silicone like this, maintaining that translucency and realism is the whole point of using the product. So you don't want to destroy that by putting in too much pigment. And typically for just basic flesh tone, like what I have on my palm here, uh, I start with, I use the flesh flocking, a little bit of the tan and a little bit of the red flocking. And I'm doing this all in one cup to just to keep things simple. But if you are new to this, I highly recommend, we have some previous videos where we show how to pigment silicone in two separate cups, the A and B before you mix it together. And that's always a good thing to do if you're new to this so you don't wind up in a situation where you use up all your working time getting your color just right. So there's our color and now we're ready for our pour. And now, quick word about those of you new to some of these silicone systems and molds and this sort of thing. I'm gonna put a link in the video description uh, to our silicone prop page that covers a variety of techniques that'll be uh, directly related to casting silicone parts. So hi I highly recommend that. If you're new to casting silicone, one of the first videos on that page is includes this mold and talks about some of the different compatible mold materials, which is obviously very important. Now this is low viscosity. This doesn't have to be vacuum degassed, but if you're casting uh, skins and uh, especially parts that you don't want to have any kind of porous quality to them, I highly recommend vacuum degass. 
Um, again, this is low enough in viscosity. Most of these air bubbles will easily come to the surface and break, but uh, always good practice to vacuum degas your silicone. Now, the working time on this is about five minutes, and then we have about a one hour demold at room temperature. Now, this being summertime here in Texas, it's gonna be faster than that, but you always wanna remember, the hotter the working environment, the faster it's gonna go. If you're working in a cool area, that's gonna slow everything down, and it's never a good idea to work with platinum silicones below about 65 degrees. When you start getting down lower than that, weird things start happening, and you can have some really strange cure issues from just not enough ambient heat. So remember, Ambient heat is part of the cure process, so you wanna make sure there's enough of it to kick everything off, and the more of it you have, the faster it goes. So again, this being summertime, if we want this to go faster, we could even take this outside in the parking lot, plop it down in a hot car, and it's gonna go even faster. Okay, so it's about an hour later and our silicone ear is ready to demold, but I always like to go by whatever's left over in the mixing cup because before I start messing with this, I, I wanna make sure I'm not accidentally trying to demold this too early. So whatever's left over in here is a good gauge of how this is reacting with the ambient temperature. So again, just to make sure that it's really ready to demold. Again, if you're doing a really critical parts, last thing you wanna do is rush it, pull something out and have it uh, deform in the demolding process. Okay, so our our silicone in the cup has set up. And remember, this is a very soft, very, very soft 0010 silicone. So it's not gonna have the strength that you would typically get with something like the 0030 skin cast. So real important to remember that. Um, so when you're demolding it out of something like this, it's a relatively uh, complicated mold as far as undercuts are concerned. You wanna take your time to uh, be careful not to tear your cast. And remember, this was not vacuum degas, so this is a good indication of what kind of results you can get without any kind of special, uh, special equipment. And there we have our ear and it is actually bubble free. So we have a really nice stretchy little ear. And uh, this, this part, if you're, where skin cast is really helpful is very simple parts, uh, like something like this or something that's gonna have maybe a hard back to it. Uh, we have a lot of people use the skin cast, some of the softer skin cast silicones for uh, breast models, for uh, mammogram tests and things like that. So that's typically where these really soft formulas excel. But remember, all these are designed to work with each other. If you need an encapsulating layer that's a lot tougher, that's where we'd recommend the new 0030. But there you have the most important thing about this video is mainly about pigmenting this. And you notice we didn't have any of that white pigment settle out. And that's real important on a, a cast like this when you're working with these really low viscosity silicones using that trick of mixing in a little bit of silicone fluid into your pigment will help that disperse easier and not settle out because that titanium dioxide that gives it that white color is really dense and heavy. And if you're not careful, you just put a big chunk in there. Sometimes you'll stir it up and it'll look nice, but you'll wind up with uh, globs of pigment down in the low points of the mold where it's settled out. So again, that's a good little trick for making sure you get your uh, pigment dispersed properly in a really low viscosity silicone. Now, as usual, all of the relative links are in the video description, so be sure to check those out. And most importantly, if you're new to our page, be sure to check out the, the link. I'm gonna put a link down there for the video library, the silicone prop page. That has a lot of good information about compatible mold materials for platinum silicones, as well as a lot of other casting and painting techniques. So those of you working on simulators or dolls or effect skins or any of those kinds of applications, a lot of really important links down there. So be sure to check those out. And of course, if you haven't already, be sure to like and subscribe.